Recently, in one of my live streams, I brought up the topic of buying your kids 3D printers to empower their creativity when they're still in school. A lot of people seem to think that was a good idea. So, I'm going to do a video like that today, but, you know, the workshop's pretty noisy. I've got the Zortrax chugging along for another 60 hours. I've got the Cetus printing. I've got the, the Prusa. And it's a really nice day. So, I thought I'd do something a little bit differently. I'm going to take this video outside. Right, well I have no idea where I want to go. Um, Bullet Pass is closed for the next three months. So... Let's go to the dam. Let's go to the dam. Alright guys, we're here at the dam and I don't know what's happened, but it's gone from nice and sunny and warm to freezing and windy and cloudy. So, it's too windy to film out there because you won't hear anything in the microphone. Still gonna film in the car, unfortunately. Oh well, we're here in a nice location. So who's this video for? Basically, this video is aimed at you kids who are still in school and the parents of the kids in school. And I wanna tell a bit of a story as to how I got to where I am now with Maker's Muse and how it kind of hinged on me making and creating rather than just getting good grades in school. You see, in school, my parents sent me to a great school and, you know, it was a co-ed, non-religious, decent school in the city, but I never really found the school environment engaging. So in year nine, I discovered Australia's Robot Wars competition, and that was out in Blacktown. So from Sydney, Sydney where I, my parents were in Bondi, Bronte, to Blacktown, that's a pretty long way to drive, and also Blacktown doesn't have the best reputation in Sydney as the nicest area. And this competition was sort of like a backyard event in someone's literally backyard that built an arena. So my parents took a risk and took me to that competition. And I decided to build robots. I got absolutely hooked. And from that point on, I started learning how to create and make things. And it was actually that that took and catapulted my knowledge of building things to where I am today. So fast forward to me getting into in industrial design at university. I didn't get into that because I got awesome grades. I got average grades, maybe like 86 um, UAI, whatever it was called. You know, average, not great though. I didn't really try too hard because I was too busy building robots. But I got in because I did an interview with them and I was like, yeah, here's a machine I've built. I designed it all in RhinoCAD and I got it plasma cut out of Bizaloy 450, which is a mining steel. And I chose this steel because it's hard on the outside and soft on the inside, so it won't shatter. And they were like, wow, okay, you have to come into this course. And that's how I got into industrial design at university, not because of good grades, but because of my knowledge and because of what I'd learned outside of school. I remember my history teacher saying to me, Angus, what have you done on your, your history exam? I'm like, oh, yeah, I drew robot designs on it during the exam because I got bored. <laughs> That's just how I was. I learnt through doing, not through just, you know, sitting in class rewriting down what the teacher was talking about. Never really clicked with me. So, this video serves as a purpose to provide a different perspective to the normal route many people would consider when their kids are growing up. Because you want them to get a good education, you want them to get a good job, you want them to be independent. I totally understand that. Consider this. A 3D printer these days probably costs around, a good one, $500 or so. That's around the same price as a gaming console. Right, so you can see 3D printers as a toy, or you can see 3D printers as a learning tool to empower your kid's creativity. So if the kid has shown no interest in 3D printing, then don't buy one for them because, yeah, it'll be a toy. They'll be like, oh, you know, I'm not really interested in this. I'll print some stuff or Thingiverse. Then they'll just lose interest and it'll sit in the corner gathering dust. But if your kid's been, you know, watching my videos, for example, or other people's videos on YouTube, or showing, or, you know, showing you these things they've learnt, or 3D modeling with Tinkercad or Fusion, you're doing them a disservice by not getting them at least a low-end 3D printer. If you're, if you're unsure if they'd actually take advantage of it, a lot of universities and makerspaces now offer 3D printers for the public use. See, like, take your kid to a makerspace opening. 
you usually have openings like every Saturday or so, or to a library if they've got a 3D printer, and see what happens when they actually turn their ideas into a creation. I know I used to spend hours on the internet researching different motors for my robots and different things and designing different concepts. Once you give them the tool to actually take that idea and push it forwards, you'd be amazed as to what some kids can come up with. I've worked with 14 year olds that have an amazing knowledge in 3D space versus when I was in, you know, year seven or so. Absolutely incredible. And there's another way to look at 3D printing and that's for, I guess, entrepreneurial reasons. So a great example for you guys in high school who printed fidget spinners when the craze was massively hot topic, well done. That is a perfect example of finding a need and then providing a service to then make profit. You, you can, I think many people paid off their 3D printers doing that. That's one way you can look at 3D printing as well, as a means to provide a service, entrepreneurial service. And then you can build that knowledge as you get older. So for me, doing Maker's Muse, for example, I kind of fell into this. You know, I was doing videos just as, as for fun, and then it became actually profitable enough for me to quit my job. This is all gained because of 3D printing and because of my, I suppose, entrepreneurial way of looking at things. I saw 3D printing on YouTube as a need. I saw that people wanted to, to have access to, you know, unbiased reviews and in-depth projects and see, uh, uh, to see tutorials and things that they could use to kind of guide their learning experience. And I just went into it and then, yeah, you know, it th three years later it's paid off. So imagine what your kid could do if they're in year, year seven, 14 years old with that technology now. Imagine what they'd be doing when they're 20, you know? So I suppose in terms of this video, it's a bit rambly, I do apologize. I was really hoping it would be sunny. It's been so cold here. But um, basically, don't, don't see 3D printing as a fad because it was hype. A few years ago, 2014, the share price for 3D systems went to $100 and now it's at $12 a share or something like that. It was overhyped. Now, it's very much a useful practical process that you can use to skill up your kid or if you are that kid again, speaking to you directly, skill yourself up outside of your educational sphere, your conventional school, your conventional university. So you have these really valuable skills that will come in handy and be very valuable in a few years time when you leave that educational space. Because yeah, 3D modeling is hugely valuable. Thinking in 3D space, VR is massive now. I project that in a few years time, VR design will be a hugely lucrative market. If you're starting now, 3D printing is just a kind of tool to guide you to that area. And look, it doesn't have to be 3D printing. You could get the, as I said, VR, you could get a, 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 a Vive, or you could, you could get a CNC router, or anything that kind of pushes your creativity past its sort of implied boundaries, I would recommend exploring. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I really, really do hope that if your child has expressed interest in making things, then do give them the chance to try it out because you never know what they might achieve. And I really, really think that this generation of iPad kids, you know, you see them in the trolley, in the, in the strollers with iPads and the face and all that sort of thing. We need makers. We need more makers. We always will need people to design and create things. And if you give them that opportunity early on, who knows what they'll achieve. If you enjoyed this video, guys, on Maker's Muse, I know it was a bit random. Hit the subscribe button, it helps us out a huge amount. I'm going to go check this dam out. Even though it's freezing, then I'm going to drive back home. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye. Twenty thousand five hundred ninety-seven million gallons. <laughs> That's a lot of water. So there's where the sun went. That tiny spot which is getting sun from the clouds. Great. Alright, well that was fun. It's absolutely freezing now. Nice dam. And I'm going to head back home, I guess. Lovely, lovely. One hour of sun. Isn't it meant to be spring? It's meant to be spring. Whatever. <laughs>